working to set you know, sharing. Interesting choice of pictures for your front page. <laughs> Give me one sec. Do you have lights on or lights off of this? Hmm? Who wants lights on? Nobody? All right, begin. Uh, yes, yeah, it should be on. Okay, so. Um, the 1948, that guy right there, decided to go to CIA during the Cold War. His name is Frank Weisner, and he is appointed to the director of the Office of Special Projects and given a very strict order to create an organization that focuses on <coughs> anti communist propaganda around the world. Left five. So, in 1948, he established Operation Mockingbird, which is an alleged CIA program designed to attempt to manipulate domestic news programs for propaganda purposes. So, the first thing he did was he went to Philip Graham from the Washington Post, a very influential publisher, and asked him to lead the operation from inside the news industry. Because he's a very influential publisher, he gets to control what gets posted. And then, after he recruited Mr. Graham for an unknown amount of money, they both were a part of the writer group called the Georgetown Set, which also contained a bunch of influential writers. And they recruited extremely influential writers like James Truitt, Russell Wiggins, and Alan Barth. And another notable writer named Joseph Alsop who wrote for over 300 different newspapers over his career. So by 1953, the CIA had control of 25 major media outlets. Uh, they would the CIA would pay journalists to write articles that favored the American view during the Cold War and just bashed communism in an attempt to <coughs> keep down communist influence in the United States. They used funds from the Marshall Plan to help pay these publishers and these writers. And Frank Weiser's number one obsession was described as a hell-like infatuation with destroying communism. So they commissioned a movie of that book right there called Animal Farm in 1954 for, again, an unknown amount of money. And Weisner even had as much control as to restrict journalists and travelers from going to communist controlled countries or places the CIA didn't want them. How did you lose it? I didn't even touch it. Uh, another major player in the operation was Henry Luce right there. He was the owner and founder of Time, Life, Fortune, and Sports Illustrated. And he was shocked when Truman won the election in 1948 and was infuriated when Shah was taken over by communism in 1949. And so he used his media empire to help influence the election where Eisenhower won, that be that one I forgot. And then immediately after that, Eisenhower appointed Henry's wife Claire as ambassador to Italy, where conveniently the CIA would help in a takeover, well, help stop a socialist takeover. Coincidence? I don't think so. And then Thomas Braden, who is not on the slide, was the head of the Internal Affairs Organization, and he was being paid up to <coughs> Fifty thousand U.S. dollars, which is five hundred eighty-nine thousand five hundred five dollars in today's money, to media outlets in Europe to not report on communism either. So the FBI in 1953 started to get suspicious of what the CIA was doing. So that guy right there, J. Edgar Hoover, was the director of the FBI, and he was very jealous of what the CIA could do and the FBI could not. So he described Frank Weiser and all of the journalists he had hired as a gang of weirdos and started looking into them, and they discovered that Weisner and a bunch of top CIA officials were very left politically, and so they're obviously communists, and they got reported to McCarthy. Upon learning McCarthy was going to slander them, uh, Weisner unleashed 
mockingbird on him, and all these journalists attacked McCarthy and his career was destroyed. And then other instances after that was the overthrow of Jacobo Arbenz in Guatemala. Uh, there were zero articles published favoring Arbenz's side and over a hundred favoring the revolution. And Weisner even banned travel for journalists to Guatemala. So there's no reporting that went on there. And then in 1963, David Wise and Thomas Ross wrote a book exposing everything that Operation Mockingbird did. And the CIA called them in and they were like, hey, don't post that. Don't, don't do that. And they were like, we're going to do it anyway. So they released it. And this was the last instance of Operation Mockingbird. The CIA bombed the book reviews terribly. It is one of the worst rated books in American history. And I don't know if the title is going to get that. So in 1955, Eisenhower was concerned about covert CIA activities and created the 5412 committee, which basically just assessed how covert operations in the CIA were going to affect the American people and if they were constitutional. And then in 1975, Frank Church from the following committee, which was called the Church Committee, released his findings and reported the CIA influenced over 1,000 books and there were over 5,000 articles that were influenced as well. <coughs> so then the general public was made aware of Mockingbird. And then right after that, the record CIA, George Bush, said the CIA would not enter a contract with any journalist or publisher ever again. So the proof for this conspiracy is we have a couple of declassified documents that say this happened. The Church Committee findings, which were released by Frank Church, we just talked about that. And then they admitted to it. There are officials and journalists that admitted that this happened. The disputes are the CIA still denying this ever happened. It is always possible the media was just acting on their own. And the evolving media, where there's all these different ways of reporting that the CIA may or may not have control over, so we really don't know. The last few effects of this were there's less trust in the media now and the least trust of the government, which we hear about a lot. Uh, there were more ethics brought into journalism, such as don't take bribes. And they increased awareness of disinformation at the time and now. And do I think it's true? Yeah, I do. They admitted to it. So, and then the declassified documents, the few that we have also admitted to it. So when they straight up say it happened, I can't really say it didn't happen. That's the end. Let me ask one question. So you said that they, um, they destroyed McCarthy. Is that is that a theory that they destroyed McCarthy? It is a theory, yeah. yeah. So the obvious <coughs> things. Okay, and then I guess the last thing. And then, so it ended in what year again? Uh, 1976 was when George Bush said we're not going to enter any contracts. But the last major instance was in 1960. So the would this lead to any future conspiracies? Uh, a couple. Yeah, they're controlling the news. They must be controlling everything. Okay. You guys still read Animal Farm? Yeah, the first three years. Yeah. yeah. The cartoon is really pretty anti con. <laughs> yeah, you know the CIA paid for that, basically. Yeah, question right here. So, is the exact conspiracy that the CIA was using all the information data that they had to get their conflict figures? The conspiracy is the CIA is paying journalists to report what they want. So that communism doesn't like, come into the media and then it might lead to a rise of communism. All right, good job. Okay. Oh, no. All right, who would like to go next? You know what I think we need now? There's only one thing that would solve our fear of the CIA controlling everything. The CIA controls something. And that's a good old fashioned satanic panic. Ellen, ready? Sure. Come on. We better turn the lights off. This is on the I don't know the mouse. Cash, can I get the lights real quick?
We need, we need a kind of scary dark. <laughs> By the way, I still vividly remember this. All right, go. Okay, so the Phoenix Clinic is the allegations of virtual abuse in which kind of started it because more horror content came out about like demonic and satanic stories so it didn't seem so far-fetched for it to be real because there was a bunch of like movies about it and the book michelle remembers came out in the 80s it was published by lawrence tyler and Michelle Smith, and it was about how they used recovered memory therapy to get Michelle to remember about her traumatized, her traumatizing childhood, about being a part of a satanic cult that like, um, like abused her, like she was involved in satanic ritual abuse as a child, and yeah. And the book caused people to really re like believe it because they thought it was true, but a lot of reporters said that um, it wasn't very like I don't know, like it wasn't very reliable of a source because the recovered memory therapy that they did is like. It's like um, they don't use that practice anymore because it's not reliable. And because the book was such a huge success, it made people paranoid. And so they thought a lot of corporations were evil like McDonald's. And in 1978, McDonald's had to make a public announcement that Ray Kroc, who was a franchise founder, was not um, a financial supporter of the Church of Satan because they got a bunch of letters asking why he donated to one, like one of the satanic organizations. And so they had to come out and be like, we're not satanic and we never did that. I don't know where the rumors came from, but they got a bunch of letters about it. Um, Dungeons and Dragons is one thing that parents specifically thought was very satanic because um, at the time, they just thought all popular culture with kids was satanic, and it looks like a movie <coughs> called Mazes and Monsters that apparently, like, said it was satanic, and parents got so concerned that they, like, there's an organi organization called Bothered About Dungeons and Dragons, and they just really made it. So there's daycare stories about the workers being satanic, like and involving the kids at the daycare in rituals and like abusing them and sacrificing children. And a lot of kids got questioned, and apparently a lot of them came out with stories about um, watching a teacher fly and sacrificing kids. Um, but people said that those kids were just pressured to say it because they were scared. But, and they actually like so a few workers getting arrested because of these accusations because they thought they were being the babies. Which is scary. Um, a lot of people thought that they were satanic messages in songs, specifically rock songs, like rock music. And in cartoons, or like, Symbols of Satan, rituals, and also in TV commercials. They just thought it was everywhere. So, people believed this because of urban legends, really, and they had a bunch of unqualified sources, and media just blew it way out of proportion. So, 
Um, I think these are horrible accusations, especially the daycare stories, because that's horrible. And I don't really think it was real, because that's just, it's way out of proportion. So, uh, Michelle remembers what what kind of how they get the memory from her again? They said they did like recovered memory therapy, which it was like six hundred hours of hypnosis, basically. That's what they said it was. And she told all kinds of stories. Yeah, and they all didn't line up because she said like that people in the town that it happened in were like missing fingers, but people who lived in the town at the time were like, no. And when did it start to die down? Um, I don't. I think like I don't know, like the nineties, late nineties. Mid eighties, late eighties. Oh really? Yeah, I don't. I didn't get that. Yeah, I remember Dungeons and Dragons was a big thing when I was in. I remember when I was in school and saying that the Dungeons and Dragons was a topic. Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, play that game. And we all know that. By the way, good job with the dice on this. All right, good. Huh? I remember being in college and this kid was convinced that Hotel California by the band The Eagles was satanic. And he kept trying to tell me, it's all about the devil. So, of course, somebody in that hallway would play Hotel California over and over again. You know what? I don't know who that was. It could have been anybody. How about, when does the bell ring here? Six. All right, we're good. Let's do another one. These are great. There's a lot. Let's do that. Just that part. Come out again. Always oh, great to do that. Alright, go. Alright, so I just thought this was a lie, which is that he's very sure that he believes that he didn't actually kill himself in the air bunker. Um, so he's a politician, um, and he goes to power in 1933, and he believed that he died just, that, well, it's proven that he died from suicide. And he's, so um, he's the main cause of the Holocaust. Um, he has over 20 assassination attacks. His nephew was actually uh, in the U.S. Navy. He's really well known for his mustache. <laughs> he, when he was arrested uh, for treason in 1924, he wrote Mein Kampf, which means my troubles in German. And his wife was Diva Eberron. So the conspiracy is that he um, didn't actually die in fear bunker. And he uh, evacuated to Argentina with his wife. Um, by submarine. Um, he used a look like double, and they, it was like a gunshot wound to the head. So they like shot it at and put him in his place. Um, so the guy who created, uh, not really like created the conspiracy, but like brought it to the public attention is like uh, Marshal Georgi uh, Zuko. Um, there was a conference about the Spoken Theory and like 68 percent of the Americans in the conference were unbelievable. Um, so that's like proving it was um, they people say that they spotted him. Um, there was a lady in a cafe who said she thought she saw Hitler in a um, cafe dressed as a woman. Um, they also tested the blood that was on his sofa in the pure bunker. Um, and it said that it didn't match with his blood type. And then they found they also found his escape and the Nazis that also came to Argentina. And there was also it's proven that some um, Nazis blood type didn't have to be well into the blood. Um they um so disproving it would be um they found Hitler's teeth um and it matched his dentist's description of what his teeth looked like. Um and also uh, Eva Braun, she was also found in uh, a few weeks later dead due to cyanide poisoning. So it would kind of be hard to like find two uh, people who 
like cover up it up and pretend that it would look like it was like it would be hard to find two that looks just like them and playing that out on the news. And so yeah, his school fragments in mythology um, was comparable to Ray Rappi's Hitler uh, school taken the year before his death. So the last thing is that there's eight years later there are people finding ways to prove the conspiracy. Um, there are three, there's a three season documentary on who knows what it's called, Hunting Hitler. It's, uh, it's like people are just doing it as they can to like, prove that it actually happened. And then people are denying that it ever happened because of like, everything that happened. And so I don't think that like, Hitler did die in Pure Bunker just because like, it's kind of hard to, again, like, find two people who look exactly like Hitler and his wife and try to um, like, cover it up. Um, and also, there's so much evidence that he did actually die. Did you watch the Hulu series? I watched, Hitler? like, the first couple episodes. Uh, I, I didn't really want to watch all three seasons because each episode's, like, an hour long. Well, that's what we're doing in the next five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like the series? It's okay. Yeah, it's it shouldn't have been like three seasons. They could have made it into like a movie. Um, but it's it's pretty good. And the other question is, so Zukov just happened to mention that there he could. Yeah. He was a high rank Soviet officer. Yeah, the Soviets were right there. All right. But you don't think he went to Argentina? And he'd be, what, 100 and... Uh, there's still like 140 today, that's not bad. <laughs> you, 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 you're, you're, All right, good job. Why do you have that mustache? Uh, oh, because of the gas mask. The gas mask. Because of the gas mask, the gas mask. The gas mask. yep. All right. Okay, the, we have time for one more presentation, so let's do it, and one more thing. There are two people who have not turned in anything. And so that's going to go with zero on the quarter grade, just so you know. Okay. I'm easy for me to grade. Let's do. Fashion, you ready? Storm is coming. All right. For my conspiracy, I chose AIDS. And I'm going to tell you what is AIDS. AIDS is what it stands for. It is Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. And it's the most advanced stage of HIV. And it attacks C4 cells. The, the conspiracy itself is that the government was putting AIDS into the American economy to kill homosexuals and blacks and how they would put it through is by the smallpox vaccination and this was written in the 80, 1987 in the New York Times article by uh, Paul Pierce, I mean Pierce Wright and it just said that the small smallpox, vac smallpox vaccination will give you AIDS and, smallpox vaccination? Oh, okay. Yeah. And the South President of Africa, the real, I don't know how to say his name, but he basically said that it was made in military labs and sent to hurt the American people. And uh, this hurt his uh, trades and his political career a lot. Uh, we were ready for this conspiracy because the government was like not acknowledging AIDS for so long and people were like getting scared because of it because so many people were getting AIDS and people were scared because of it and everyone wanted an answer so they just all started jumping to conclusions. People that believe this conspiracy is mostly lower household incomes and like people that can't get education because it's proven that we get AIDS through essentially. But yeah. And there is a door-to-door -door survey that 
it was proven that 23% of the African American community believed that AIDS was uh, by the government and they had to kill them. Facts that seem to prove it, uh, really nothing. It was just lacked trust in health officials and that they heard it from someone that they trust, like their mom or friend, and they just heard it from someone that they trust. So there's really no like evidence backing it up. It was just people being scared and reacting. Uh, facts that disprove it is that it's been proven that sexual contact will lead to AIDS and, you know, it's pretty hard to dispute that. And I believe that the chimpanzee uh, theory is that, like, in the 1600s, people hunted chimpanzees and when they hunted the chimps, they got blood that was infected with the virus and which, that's how they got into the people. Yeah. In like the 1600s, I read something like that. How did that? Uh, the effect is that like distrust in the government will like lead to bad like I don't know. Uh, an understanding like where HIV comes from will reduce the rates of it. Like if you understand where it comes from, then you would won't get it. And if you're spreading not false information, then people will get it more. And it won't allow people to get the right medical help because they believe the thing that they heard or something like that. I believe that this conspiracy theory is fake because it's contracted through sexual transmission. And I think that just came up because people wanted to answer when the government denied AIDS for like well, they didn't acknowledge it for so long, and it just made people anxious and for no education. What would you say the biggest cause of the pandemic? Would it be education or would it be um, lack of education? Yeah, that's what I would say. Because, like, people that had the education really, like, disputed it and, like, I don't know, didn't believe it. And then kind of mistrust the government by people who didn't have much power or that kind of thing. Yeah. You don't buy it at all. How many people would have been involved to have it? Yeah, it would have been like quite a few <laughs> military officials. And they would have talked. Yeah, I remember the smallpox thing. It's not through the smallpox vaccine. All right, good job. <laughs> by the way, you'll catch a big connection between that and people's fear. You heard the same kind of stuff or for COVID and things like that. All right, so I'm going to talk about a few other things tomorrow. We still got a few more presentations, but there are two people here I've got nothing from. So the paper I'm putting in last quarter's grade, so I got to change that grade time. I got that. And it's got a few more presentations, and then I know a storm is coming through. It's going to be, let's get really windy tomorrow. It might get, it might get a lot of snow in the past. So it's going to be a perfect run of lunch. And one more thing, I'll go over a few of the presentations and we are going to have to have a test on this. I'll go through, then I'm going to pick two or three to be a little personal. We need Princess Diana first. And then we still have. A couple more to do. I'll go second. You want to go second? Yeah. I'll, I'll, you're going to be the end. You're going to be the end. No, it doesn't have that one. Three and then. Yeah. So This one's out. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. Did, did you want to do, but right, so everyone pay attention up here. Did you want to do the Kennedy assassination? We'll talk about that. Yeah. 
All right. Thank you. 